Okay, so I guess uh, welcome back and thanks for watching my second video. So I'm just uh, gonna jump right in and talk about the main players that go into uh, proving Liska's and my result that I outlined in the first video. So as a definition, um, an integral lattice is a free abelian group, lambda. So as a group isomorphic to Z to the N for some N. But additionally, it carries a symmetric bilinear pairing that takes values in the integers. Um, a little bit more of terminology. So the rank of a lattice, by that we just mean the rank, uh, the free rank of its underlying abelian group. And an embedding or a lattice embedding, um, so a lattice embedding of lambda, a lattice lambda 1 into lambda 2, by this, we just mean an injective group homomorphism from lambda 1 to lambda 2, which preserves the bilinear pairing, meaning that <clears throat> once with the help of this embedding, think of lambda 1 as sitting in lam inside of lambda 2, we can think of the pairing um, on lambda 1 as being induced by that on lambda 2. So um, examples, there's a sort of trivial example, which is just C to the N endowed with the dot product, that's sometimes referred to as the standard Euclidean lattice. Slightly more interesting, um, whenever we have a orientable four manifold X, um, the free part of its second integral homology um, can be turned into a lattice using the intersection form. So the intersection form basically measures how surfaces representing free generators of um, the second integral homology of X intersect within X and that endows uh, the second integral homology of X with the structure of a lattice. So in what follows, I want to um, first outline how um, Liska's argument works to obstruct rational homology cobordisms between lens spaces in this case. And after that, I will proceed to uh, illustrate how sort of I adapted his methodology. So if we want to uh, um, obstruct the existence of a rational homology cobordism between lens spaces, suppose W is a rational homology cobordism from, let's say, LPQ to LRS. So it means that uh, the boundary of W just consists of the disjoint union of minus LPQ um, together with LRS. And minus LPQ is the same, that's fact about lens spaces, same as lens space LP comma P minus Q. And now lens spaces have this um, nice property that with both orientations, they bound canonical four manifolds, X, P comma P minus Q and XRS in this case, respectively. And the way we can build these or determine what they are. So I'm going to um, talking about X, P comma P minus Q. We can take this rational number P divided by P minus Q and expand this into a continued fraction. So um, there are unique integers, they're unique once we require them to be all at least two. There are unique integers satisfying that if we take a one minus one over, etc., as a new screen, such that the, this equals P over P minus Q. Um, and once we have these integers, we can form the four manifold, which is obtained by um, attaching, we start with a four ball, B4, and we attach two handles along this linear chain of unknots to the boundary of B4, which is S3, with framings given by these integers we found coming from this continued fraction decomposition of P over P minus Q. And we can do the same thing for X, R, S. S. So we expand R over S into a continued fraction and do a similar sort of uh, plumbing um, or attaching of two handles to B4. So, um, well, if we want to know what the intersection form on X, P, comma, P minus Q is, well, this is just represented by the linking matrix of the earlier Kirby diagram that told us how to um, attach the two handles to B4 in order to even build this four manifold. So this is in this case represented by this integral matrix that has these AIs on the diagonal and on the two off diagonals, we just have ones meaning um, or capturing the fact that all of these um, unknots that we saw earlier were successively just linked once. 
So this, this matrix represents um, the pairing on H lower two of X P comma P minus Q as an integral lattice. Okay, um, yeah, we can play the same thing for the same game for um, this four manifold, the other four manifold um, XRS, which bounds, which is bounded by the lens space LRS. And so we have these two four manifolds and we can use these to cap, sort of cap off our rational homology cobordism that we, at the very beginning, assumed would exist um, going from LPQ to LRS. So schematically here, we have this, uh, we have our W in the middle and we just glue these two four manifolds that we just built by attaching two handles to B4 on either end of W. And we're gonna call this big four manifold Z. So Z is a closed uh, four manifold then, and these two intersection forms on the four manifolds we use to cap off W so x p comma p minus q and x r comma s, these actually have the property that um, these two pairings are positive definite. This can be read of the matrix um, of this matrix here on top, um, and really makes use of the fact that we chose all of these AIs to be at least two. Um, and yeah, as I said, so z itself is a closed. Um, uh, oriented four manifold and because these two uh, other x's that we use to cap off our cobordism w because these are positive definite and because w um, is a rational uh, homology cobordism this actually implies that the intersection pairing on the big four manifold c is a positive definite pairing essentially because since W is a rational homology cobordism. There is no free second homology living there. So all the free part of the second homology of C comes from these two other smaller four manifolds that we use to cap off W. And, and that part is positive definite. So everything, the whole um, intersection form on Z is positive definite. And by a big uh, theorem due to Donaldson, um, this implies that the intersection form on C the big four manifold we built is as a lattice, as an integral lattice, is isomorphic to Z to the N endowed with the dot product. So sort of the most simple integral lattice we can think of. And moreover, again, because of homology, or rather because W um, was assumed to be a rational homology cobordism, this exponent, um, um, so the rank of this Z to the N is actually just the sum of the ranks of the intersection lattice on the two smaller four manifolds we use to cap off. So putting this together, what this yields is a, a lattice embedding of um, the orthogonal direct sum of the intersection lattices on the on x p comma p minus q orthogonal direct sum with uh, the intersection lattice on x r s into z to the n. And so, as I said above here, capital N equals N plus M. So this really is a full rank embedding of intersection lattices. So yeah, the rank of the domain equals the rank of the codomain. Well, and lastly, we can apply this same procedure to just minus W, which is a, so if we reverse the orientation on W, that gives us a, um, a cobordism from L, R, minus LRS to minus LPQ, sorry, minus LPQ to minus LRS. And this applying the same procedure just gives us yet another full rank embedding of intersection lattices, not quite the same, but rather sort of the opposite lattices into again, into the C to C to some power, but this these two powers are not necessarily the same. But in both cases, um, these lattice embeddings are full rank embeddings into the standard Euclidean one. And yeah, then so Liska then used um, the existence of both of these embeddings to sort of set up a, I would say elementary, but very involved um, combinatorial machinery to analyze embeddings of this form to obstruct hom rational homology cobordisms between lens spaces and for all the other 
um, pairs of lens spaces that pass this obstructions, uh, this obstruction, so which stood a chance of being rational homology cobordant, he showed that they actually are. So this sort of this obstruction is sort of like uh, tailor made to classify rational homology cobordisms um, between lens spaces. And just to get, uh, give you a feeling of how this obstruction is used, so one could ask, um, are the lens space L21 and L85 rational homology cobordant? So first of all, we sort of need to know what these smaller uh, four manifolds are that we use to cap off, cap off uh, a putative uh, rational homology cobordism between L21 and L85. So to that end, so, the first one will be this um, manifold x two comma two minus one, so that's just x two comma one, and the intersection um, form on that is on that four manifold is just going to be isomorphic to the integers with intersection pairing given by this one by one matrix with a two inside, which comes from the fact that two has a very simple continued fraction decomposition, which is, consists of the number two. Similarly, for L85, we expand 85 into a continued fraction. So 2 minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 actually equals 8 over 5. So, and this tells us then, then that the intersection pairing of on this second uh, piece that we use to cap off is isomorphic to z to the third. And the pairing matrix is given by this matrix here, 2, 3, 2 on the diagonal and 1's on the 2 off diagonals. And so if L21 and L85 are to stand a chance of being rational homology cobordant, then by what we discussed um, from Liska's work, there should exist a full rank embedding of the orthogonal direct sum of these two lattices into um, the standard Euclidean one. So full rank means here in this case, rank one plus rank three, so into Z to the four. And indeed this exists, namely, we can choose this embedding to be this matrix here. So in the columns, I'm writing here uh, the, the coordinates of the basis elements of these two uh, lattices, lambda x21 and lambda x85. So this first column is the image of the generator of the first orthogonal direct sum. And you can see that if this element here, 1100, 0, 0, as an element in C to the four with the dot product, it pairs with itself to give you two. So it's one squared plus one squared, which is two, which is good because um, the generator of this first orthogonal direct sum and had the self pairing of two. And similarly, these remaining three columns, they have self pairings of two, three, two, which again um, checks out with the intersection pairing uh, given on this second piece we used to cap off on X85. And one can also check that um, mutually they pair with each other to what they should pair. To. So for example, the first column has trivial scalar product with all the other columns, which makes which is what we want uh, to happen because this is a orthogonal direct sum. So lambda x to one should pair to zero with everything in lambda x85. And similarly, the third um, column pair, sorry, the second pairs with the third column to give you one, and so does the third with the fourth, which is what we want because of these off diagonal ones that we have in the second lattice. So long story short, L21 and L85 pass this lattice obstruction and they do stand a chance um, from this perspective at being rational homology cobordant, and indeed they are because one can exhibit a concordance from the two bridge link K21 to one to K85 and then taking the branch double cover of that yields a rational homology cohort is from L21 to L85. As a second brief example, one might ask, are L54 and L52 rational homology cohort? Again, we have to find out what these X manifolds are. So here we need to look at the manifold X5, 5 minus 4. So that's just X5 comma 1. Again, this is very simple. It's just integers with pairing given the generator pairs with itself to give five. Then for the second one, five over two, that's the same as three minus one half. So the continued fraction decomp or the co coefficients of the continued fraction decomposition are three and two. So this, lat this is a rank two lattice with this intersection matrix given here. 
And so, um, yeah, if L54 and L52 are rational homology coordinate, then there, there should exist a lat full rank lattice embedding. In this case, this is one plus two, so into Z to the three. There should exist this full rank embedding of lambda x51 orthogonal direct sum lambda x52 into z to the three. But as you can see, I'm writing there would. So it, yeah, it doesn't actually exist. And how do we see that? This is sort of the fun part to see why it doesn't with these lattice obstructions. So we can sort of start, try and start to build this embedding step by step. So if we want to, if this is embedding is to exist, well, the, then the generator of this first orthogonal direct sum and of lambda x51 has to be sent to some element in z to the three that pairs with itself to give five because it does so in the lambda x5 comma one. And if you think about it in z to the three, there is up to changing bases, there is essentially one element that does that, namely it's the vector two, one, zero because two squared plus one squared um, equals five. So this first column has scalar product with itself five. So there is not much choice where to send that one. And then if we proceed, so the second orthogonal direct sum and has two basis elements, one pairs against itself to, to give three, the other one uh, will give two. So if we look at the first one that has self pairing three, again, if you think about it, what elements in c to the three have scalar product equal to three with it with themselves again they're basically only the ones that have plus or minus ones in each coordinate so the second column so the image of the um, first basis element of the second orthogonal direct sum and sort of has to look like plus minus one plus minus one plus minus one not necessarily all the same signs of course but just either plus or minus one. But then you can see that this doesn't work out because regardless of how we choose the signs in this second column, then the second column and the first column will pair um, with each other to, to give something non-zero. But we would want it to have the, the second column and the first column to pair with each other to give zero because this is a orthogonal direct sum. So these two elements better be orthogonal to each other, but they're not. So such a phi actually cannot exist. And from this, then we conclude that the lens spaces L54 and L52 are not rational homology coordinate. So there are other ways of showing that these two lens spaces in particular aren't rational homology coordinate, but this is sort of an illustration of how very hands-on this lattice embedding uh, obstruction is. So now um, turning our attention to ribbon rational homology coordinate, so that's what I did in my work. Again, um, for your convenience, the definition, what it meant to be ribbon. So we say that the rational homology coordinates rib from y1 to y2 is ribbon. If it can be built by um, using just one and two handles, so no three handles. And yeah, we're considering the questions, the question, when does there exist a ribbon rational homology coordinates from a lens space to a different one or to another lens space? I mean, the question is like, how do we obstruct this existence? We know how to, thanks to, thanks to Liska, we know how to obstruct rational homology coordinates, but now we need to know how to obstruct ribbon rational homology coordinates between lens spaces. So this is uh, essentially captured in this lemma here. So suppose that there is a ribbon rational homology coordinates from LPQ to LRS. Well, then there exists a full rank lattice embedding of these lambda x p comma p minus q orthogonal direct sum with lambda x r comma s. Um, so far, that's nothing new. That's also what we know from Liska's work. But since this, uh, the fact that this cobordism is ribbon is now reflected in the fact that the orthogonal um, complement, orthogonal complement under the dot product on z to the n, the orthogonal complement of the second image of the second summoned under this embedding actually has to equal the image of the first orthogonal direct summoned. So I'm just going to point out typically for lattices, well, because we're embedding a orthogonal direct sum here, we're always going to have that the image of the first orthogonal direct sum is contained in the orthogonal complement of the second summoned. But really, for lattices, this is like an, a non-generic condition that that we have equality here. Um, and in fact, this 
equality so that the first sum and really on the nose equals the orthogonal complement of the second sum and um, this is equivalent to saying that the first sum and um, or rather the, the codomain c to the n modulo the image of the first sum and doesn't contain any torsion so maybe that gives you an idea that that's sort of special so this is the sort of lemma that um, gives us the obstruction we work with, uh, the obstruction to there being a ribbon coordinate from a lens space to another one. And I just want to sketch the proof of this lemma real quick, essentially to sort of show where exactly this um, condition on there not being any three handles comes in. So again, um, if we have a ribbon cobordism from a lens space L1 to L2, I just indicated here a very schematic one handle, to sort of keep track of the directionality. We can cap, um, cap it off with, a, with these plumped four manifold X1 and X2 as before. And now this is something I'm gonna black box, but by some generalities about lattices, about integral lattices, in order to establish this equality we wanna establish, um, it suffices to establish the surjectivity of the natural restriction map from second integral cohomology of the big four manifold C, um, restricting to second cohomology of just X1. So that's the usual restriction map and cohomology. Um, so yeah, how, do, how are we going to analyze this? Well, there is a long exact sequence in cohomology, relative cohomology, I should say, of uh, cohomology of C, the big thing, relative to just the leftmost portion X1. So if we want to establish that this restriction map R1 is surjective, it suffices to show that this third relative cohomology group of C relative to X1 is um, zero. And this is now where the, the handle, um, the fact that there are no three handles involved is going to come in in a second. So first of all, we can rewrite this homology group, cohomology group by excision just to be, um, it's the same. If, if we take sec third cohomology of C relative to X1, that's the same as relative third relative cohomology of just the left, uh, sorry, the rightmost two thirds of this picture relative to L1. And then again, here's just the same picture for your convenience. Um, this third relative cohomology group by Poincaré duality is just the same as the first absolute homology um, of the rightmost two thirds of this picture. So just the part formed by W and X2. So that's just some homological arguments. And now finally, the part that this W doesn't involve any three handles relative to L1 comes in, namely, so if we can build W starting from L1, attaching just one and two handles, then, well, we can also sort of turn the whole thing around. So we can um, build this um, this four manifold W union X2 by just taking X2. But what was X2? X2 is a four ball with some two handles attached. And so, and then all we have to do is to um, glue back sort of the reverse of W onto that thing but if W itself um, has only one and two handles with respect to L1, it only has two and three handles with respect to its other boundary component. So putting all things together, W union X2 can be built by just take B4, attach two handles to make it X2, and then attach some two handles and some three handles to actually make it W union X2. And the upshot being that W union X2 admits an absolute um, handle decomposition that doesn't involve any one handles, just two and three handles. And from that, it's immediate that H lower one of this uh, W union X2 uh, has vanishing first homology, which by what, I, what, what is on the previous slide um, establishes surjectivity of this restriction map and what we wanted. So this is maybe a, a bit much, but point is just, I just wanted to illustrate where exactly the handle structure of W really comes into play. So yeah, again, um, an example, it's the same as we looked at, at earlier. So we saw that L21 and L85 are rational homology coordinate, or well, at the very least, we saw that um, they passed the lattice obstruction. 
Um, and we saw that one possible um, embedding that does that shows that they um, pass the lattice obstruction is this matrix here. And now here, actually, if we inspect this a little further, if there is to be a ribbon cobordism from L to one to L eight five, then the orthogonal complement um, to the space spanned by the second through the fourth coordinate should equal the um, space spanned by the first column. Sorry, I say coordinates instead of column. So, but yeah, if we look at what's the orthogonal complement to the space uh, spanned by the second through fourth column, well, it's actually generated by the vector um, 1100. Zero, zero. And that's on the nose the same as the image of the first intersection lattice. So this pair here, L21 and L85, L8 um, really passes this obstruction, this refined obstruction for there to be a ribbon rational homology cobordism from L21 and L285. And indeed, the, um, there is one, there is a ribbon rational homology cobordism from L21 to L85, essentially because the same concordance that can be used to establish that L21 and L85 are just homology cobordant is actually a ribbon co concordance. So if we take the double branch cover of that concordance, then that gives us um, a ribbon cobordism from L21 to L85. And yeah, so um, as I out, uh, showed in my first talk, um, basically whenever there is one uh, ribbon cobordism from one lens space to another one, this turns out can only be possible if the first one is of the form ln comma one. So this checks out with the fact that we have an L21 here. And yeah, um, so now um, having said um, all these things about orthogonal complements, a few closing words, I guess, about how to prove um, this theorem. So really, essentially, once we have this lemma that gives this refined obstruction, one summon should be the orthogonal complement of the other one. It really follows from, yeah, getting um, in the weeds of uh, Liska's combinatorial machinery and his um, proofs rely on this operation that can be applied to a lattice embedding it's called expansion and essentially it follows from sort of keeping track um, of how uh, the orthogonal complement to an orthogonal embedded orthogonal direct summand can 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 change under these expansions and it then it just turns out it's basically never changes so it always has to be ln comma one um so yeah that's um where i'm gonna stop so if you have questions Obviously, let me know, send me an email, see me in the office hours, and thanks for watching my talks.